You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome to What's Happening West Hartford. I'm here today with Kyoko Shirani and uh, Evelyn Miller of uh, Access Spa and Apricot Blossom, where they're going to be joining together, and it's going to be an amazing place for you to go to. I love going to spas. You know, it's a place to relax and get my makeup done, get a facial, but I need to know exactly what goes into the process of getting a massage. So. Um, Kyoko, tell me about some of um, the basic massages that you offer. Um, I offer a bunch of different massages. Um, basic would be Swedish. Um, I specialize in deep tissue massage, but I also offer prenatal, hot stone, um, ashiatsu massage, which is a full hour done um, with my feet. So throughout the massage, I'll check in with you, see if you want more or less pressure. So if you come in, a lot of people come in and say, oh, I want deep tissue, but they can't handle that pressure, or oh, I want Swedish, which is just basically light touch, but then they do end up wanting the little deeper massage. So it, it all depends. I just kind of adjust as the massage goes along. I usually see people come in about every two weeks for relaxation, but I also see a lot of people come in for injuries. It's good for maintenance, not just for, for stress relief. Okay, I really like that. And now the hot stones. Now, how hot is that? I mean, am I going to... How it's does not, that? <laughs> it's not going to burn you. It's okay. really, it's really relaxing. Um, it. I see more people um, come during the winter time to do it. Okay. Um, it's more, it's more of just like a relaxing massage, not really a deep tissue, you know, working on problem areas. Okay, I like that. Now, treatments on your body. So if I'm going to get a massage and I wanted to get a waxing, now does that something you can do together, or should you wait when your pores? you know, close or can you do that, you know, combining? Can I get a facial and, you know, some waxing and get a massage or do we have to do that separate? Oh, absolutely. You, that's why um, it's so easy to come to Excess Spa uh, Beauty Lounge and Apricot Blossom because it's a one-stop shop. You come oh, wow. okay. and you can get everything done. Um, after you relax with um, Kieko, you can pop over and get your massage, your facial. I always try to educate my clients and tell them, just like when we change our clothes, we change our fabrics, it's, that's the time to change sometimes your skincare. Okay. Um, you want to probably lighten up on your moisturizer. In the wintertime, we tend to put on heavier clothes. Well, that's the time that you put on a heavier moisturizer. Right. Now that the uh, weather temperatures are getting a little warmer, then you want a little lightweight moisturizer. So I advise my clients who do come in on a regular basis to get their facials, we may switch up on the serums and the moisturizers as the seasons and the temperatures start to change. Okay, and now what about um, men? I know you men out there love to get uh, treatments. Is there something that I could, you know, offer to a, a gentleman that would be good for them? Is there do most men definitely come to a spa? Oh, definitely. I mean, believe it or not, I, and I think Keiko will agree to this that. I think about maybe 32, maybe up to now, maybe 35% of our clients are male-based. Really? Oh, yeah. So men definitely. do come to the spa? Oh, yeah. Real okay. men, too. Real, real men. Yeah. Okay. Real men get groomed. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a lot of executive men that, that come in to get their nails done because they want their hands to go with their shake. Um, they get their manicure and their pedicure, but also men who have concern with their razor bumps because they have problems with shaving. Okay. Um, they come in for their monthly grooming for their facials. Um, back facials, but also back waxing and men who work out, they have that beautiful six pack and they want to, we say, uh, bare and buff, they get their waxing yes. done as well. But those that work out, we say complete your workout with a massage. Yeah. yeah. You know. Now for working out, it's good to get that. Oh, like... it's definitely good to okay. get a massage. Um, I'd say, well, for me, it's about 50% of my clients are, are males, especially with the whole CrossFit, you know. Right. 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of injuries, but also you can't just continue working out and working out and working out and not, you know, massage it, not your massage muscles. the muscles. And now what about like scrubs? You want your body to glow. And a lot of times what happens is you may moisturize your body and then throughout the day you may find that it gets dehydrated or it gets dull, dry, and ashy. And the reason why is because the skin is not being um, moisturized through the just the two layers of skin. It's just going on the surface. Okay. So the best time to get body scrubs, I say, is as once again when the seasons change, two or three times a year. Um, we we do them the best time is I say um, from spring to summer and then yes. summer to fall okay and then fall to winter I mean so it's and it's really great Seasonal. to incorporate a scrub with a massage yes. it's awesome okay and now now I have just heard about this thing I think it's called threading oh, I don't yeah. know if anyone knows about it but it's actually with thread and it it's almost like waxing I don't know I don't really know much about threading. If you can kind of tell me, you know, what are the benefits of getting threaded versus getting waxing, or maybe it just works on different people. How does threading work? Well, threading is a, another form of hair removal. Okay. It's, an, um, it's been around for a very long time. It uh, um, it's, it's gets from the root. It gives you a very precise hair. It's really great for when you're doing the eyebrows. It gives you a very defined shape. Um, but also it can be used for the uh, lip and the chin. Okay. And also it's great for women who are maybe going through menopause and they have a lot of facial hair. Okay. Um, but women who are very sensitive to wax and can't take the um, chemicals on their face, they find it very beneficial to get their face threaded. But it's not just, uh, just for women, it's also for men as well. Um, right. But I guarantee you that if you try to get your eyebrows uh, threaded, that you probably won't go back to waxing because you okay. love the shape. So I'll come definitely by. have to check it out. I'll have to. I'm gonna definitely go into the spa and see all the treatments so that we can see what. I mean, who doesn't know how it is to get a massage? I don't. I've never gotten one before, so I'll have to try it out. Um, I'd love to see how my body is, but like I said, you'll walk me through so that I can see Definitely. what's going to work for my body because you always have to get just like a facial. You'll walk me through the different products. Definitely. A consultation is the best way to do it. You don't oh, yeah. want to just jump into any basic facial or anything like that because no. it's not good for your body. Well, no, we customize just like with anything. When you come in, we sit with you. We give you a consultation. We analyze your skin. We're going to customize it. Because okay. a lot of times you really don't know what your skin looks like until we actually look at it underneath a magnifying glass. And we're going to uh, cu customize the products to benefit your skin type. Okay, wonderful. Now, go to the best part, which I love, makeup. <laughs> now, do you, how do we do makeup? Is it just for special occasions or can I, you know, have it for like a Friday night if I wanted to just like get my makeup done? I do makeup ever for any occasion. I say to women, when you walk out the door, that is a special occasion because you are out. Okay. I mean, um, so, you know, being a makeup artist, I have women that come in and they want to learn how to do a seasonal palette. So you'll teach? Oh, yeah. Oh, I teach. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll walk me through like a oh, basic definitely. for like a Friday night versus like a Thursday mm -hmm. or a day at the office? Definitely. From day okay. to night for career, um, and I also do welfare to work program, women who are doing uh, women empowerment, and I do also self-esteem for young girls wow. to help them build up their self-esteem. Wow, that's so amazing. So you do like talks with everybody mm -hmm. in those different areas? See, this is what we need in West Hartford, something, you know, for I just want to welcome Chastity, but and, um, she's doing handbags. It's called Bella by Chastity. And I just want to thank my previous guests, uh, Kyoko and Evelyn from uh, Apricot Blossom uh, Therapeutic Massage and uh, Essex Spa for uh, joining us uh, previously. They did great. Thank you. And um, so welcome, Chastity. I see Hello. we have a lot of bags here. Yes, yes. This is just a small supply of what's in the laboratory. Okay, now tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, is this, this is all just you? This is all just me. I make my own patterns. I do all the sewing, okay. I'm quality control, I'm creative mind, all of the above. I start from scratch with everything. Wow, okay, so t you know, talk to us about a bag. Like, how, What's your process in doing a bag? Oh gosh, woo, it depends on the bag. Like for example, 
This bag here didn't really take that long to make. Um, I just wanted something that was gonna be quick and simple for a girl to just get up and go. That's why they're called to-go to containers. But that's too much creative thinking, I have to be honest. Uh, but let's say this bag, like that required days of thinking to... before I could even start the process. Okay, so basically you'll start it on paper. For anyone that maybe, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, you know, that wanna make bags and I know it's not easy. No, but it's definitely you'll not. You'll start by maybe writing it down, like this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. I, I try to basically get all the things that I've, have, have inspired me for a bag. I try to basically get all those things on like, paper so I create like a little look board if I see something in a magazine and the color was amazing to me I put that on the look board okay. uh, if I see something in the magazine and like the pattern of like on someone's shirt was amazing to me I take that put that on the look board that so helps kick the pro exactly and I can see it right there visualize it okay and then and just get a feel for the bag carrier that you are so to speak okay um and basically sketch something with you sitting there then we okay. could go shopping for like fabrics, like swatches. I want you to have a hands-on experience. Oh, all right, so you'll right. take me through the process. Exactly, okay. basically you're like my right hand man in the laboratory. I like it, I like it. So I can say, all right, I want this polka dot denim. I want it nice, like uh, go across my body yeah. and everything. And I can just say, I mean, this is you what have I want. like, you could either give me 50% of the control of making your bag or you could have 100% of the control of what your bag looks like. Okay. It's your bag. You right. have to be comfortable wearing it. I love it. I love it. So, Chastity, please tell me what your favorite piece is here on this table. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, my favorite piece isn't even a handbag. Really? So yes. So, do you like these little to-go? I love these little to-go containers, but my favorite piece that I've made personally is uh, the headband that I made. Um, okay. Fair enough. And, and everybody, this is something like princess, like to go to one of those like uh, soirees in, in London. And, yes. A little wedding. Yes. Will and, yes. Will and Kate's little. Let's see what so we have flip here. Oh, flip, flip it around. around. Actually, I didn't think about that. That looks good that way. Um, so I would use this for something. Um, something like that. I mean, personally, I have washed my dishes while uh, wearing, wearing those. This yeah. is a great headpiece. So now we do accessories too. Yes. Um, the Bella in the Bella by Chastity is actually an acronym for because every lady loves accessories. And okay. I'm branching out. I have been experimenting with some scarves and things like that. Okay. Um, this amazing hemp wool that I've got my hands on. Oh, mm -hmm. that's nice. Interesting yes. hemp. Okay. So now, so we do accessories to little to-go bags. And then would you, do you branch out to like luggage or is that um, something? I do have a large piece. Uh, it's probably a little too big for this table, but I do have a piece that... I've completed, it's called the transporter because honey, you could transport anything. Yes, you can, I that's mean, right. I mean, from a weekend getaway yes. to like just a run around day, like, and, and for moms, it's like you need great space on the inside. It's insane. Okay, and you took it and went to the next step. Exactly. Okay, now this bag here, this is something. That was crazy. I love I this. I literally dug around in a scrap bin at a leather shop and found pieces. This was like just chunks of pieces of a bag. I sewed this as I went along. Like I, oh. there was no pattern for that. I was just like, this is what I want it to look like in my head. Okay. I'm just gonna start sewing the pieces together and see what happens. Now is this like an unfinished? This is where this, you're at right now? Yes, this is an unfinished piece. Um, if you look at this, this is actually called Cirque. This is Cirque 2.0. Oh. It's a little bit, well, a lot bit bigger. Um, right now, the, what's going on here is the outside gusset has been put on. Um, that's what it's gonna be like in the inside. Oh, so that's nice. So you have right. like a fabric inside. Careful, there's still pins in there. I okay. just wanted to give you a feel for what goes on. Oh yeah, I, I'm for linings, I always go crazy. Like check out that pocket lining. Oh wow, look at the polka right? dots. Right? Ah! See, you know what's nice too? It looks like you can recycle that's a lot it. of stuff you have around the house. Exactly, and here's like, here's one thing um, that sets us apart from like other companies. Like I do take leather donations. Leather's not 100% biodegradable. Okay. So. I have lots of leather that piles up from donations around the house, but I use everything in the donation. Like for example, this bag is actually a coat. This wow. is the back side of the coat. This is actually um, another, this is some of the wool hemp I was telling you about. But all of this fringe was made, it's like a small jacket, all of this fringe was made from the sleeves. 
Oh, of the coat. interesting. Smart. Yes. So you were able to recycle an entire exactly. jacket. Exactly. So something that might not fit somebody, they can turn it into a bag. Exactly. I love it. And so smart. This is like one of my favorite bag out of it. You can say recycle Cassidy, everything. I, I have these three of my favorite fabrics, and I'd like to turn something into it. Recycle everything. There you go, everything. and you can recycle it all. This nice and comfortable, mm -hmm. right across the chest. Mm -hmm. And this it was, a, seems a like you can fit a lot it. of stuff in there. Oh, you can. My sister loses everything in here. Be well, she's unorganized. I made all these pockets inside for you to stay organized, Cell and she's phones. just like, dump, 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 dump. Yeah, which we are uh, notorious for. Exactly, Women have that was the beauty of it all. I gave you an, an, a bottomless pit. Well, that's what you need sometimes, exactly. but it's nice to have the smaller portions yes. and the one you're wearing around your waist. This. Now that's great. This is actually, um, most of this is this amazing canvas that I've been using, uh, but this was all snakeskin scraps that again, I found in a bin. And Perfect. I just used those for the front end, and I made the belt. Which is nice because Voila. you can use this for traveling. Exactly. Okay. It's quick. It just on the go. slaps right on your hip. It's perfect. I love it. This is like my favorite party bag, though. So this is something the that we can take. Holes. And oh, look at that. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. fabulous. With the rabbit fur. And you can have it right underneath like a clutch. Exactly. I exactly. Love it. It's You can definitely wear it several different ways. So there's such a variety. Yes. Um, thank you, Chastity, for You're coming today. Um, Bella by Chastity. Uh, for further information on uh, what we have here, you can uh, check out my Facebook page, What's Happening in uh, West Hartford. And uh, you can uh, link to her page, and we'll have further information on there. Thank you so much. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag Drifting through the wind Wanting to start again um, thank you so much. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I have some new guests in the studio. Uh, I do want to say thank you to um, Chastity and Bella Handbags because those were absolutely fabulous. But now we have two amazing people, uh, Carolyn and Amanda, and they are performers. And they also uh, perform in a group together called the, um, it's actually at the Falsettes uh, Piano Shop in Blueback. And I'm just going to talk to them about performing arts and where they came from and how they got to where they're at now. So um, Amanda, tell me a little bit about how you went into performing arts. Well, my first musical was with Weathersfield Teen Theater Company when I was in sixth wow. grade. It was crazy for you. I was just one of the ensemble members. And it just yeah. kind of you know, threw me into the theater scene. And my dad had always loved musical theater as well. So okay. I always was listening to cast recordings growing up. Sure, and yeah. you kind of you know, have evolved yourself into yes where you're at now. Mm -hmm. Now, Carolyn, are you in the same boat? Did you start off young? Or? Um, not really, actually. I started um, kind of a similar thing. I, I auditioned for a community theater group in West Hartford when I moved to West Hartford from Pittsburgh, actually. And my parents are musicians, so it's always been in my family. But okay. um, I just, I love watching old movie musicals. And mm -hmm. so I eventually just auditioned for one. And it was the most terrifying <laughs> experience. And I was terrible. So I was in the chorus. And ever since that, I've just been kind of auditioning for shows. And that was when I was 15, I think. That was my first wow. show. No, no, Nanette. Oh, oh, no, no, yeah. Nanette. We both had old No, ones. no, Nanette. Hey, yeah. 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 Well, that's the way you, know, you grasp on yeah. the good stuff. <laughs> now, was there someone that you, you know, kind of gravitated towards? You know, someone that you, you know, aspired to be or someone, you know, that... I, I loved Audra McDonald from a really young age. Okay. <laughs> and God. also, like, Ethel Merman. All oh, those, of course. All those great people. Okay. Yeah, Anyone? I was... I watched all the, um, like, Gene Kelly and oh, yes. Judy Garland, Judy. Fred Astaire, all those movies. So more like dancing. Yeah, that's okay. definitely how I started. I started dancing, and then I got more into singing and acting. And, okay, now yeah. do you perform in West Hartford? Yes, we perform a lot with Playhouse on Park, okay. right on Park Road next to A.C. Peterson's. Mm -hmm. We've both done quite a few shows there. Um, I've been lucky enough to do quite a few of their children's series, their oh, children's musicals. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah. okay. And they have that, like, every once in a while. They kind of change Yeah, up. they kind of do, like, fall, spring. Okay. And, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done a bunch of stuff there. I'm in... Um, Darlene Zoller is one of the co-artistic directors of the Playhouse. Okay. And she has a dance company called Stop Time Dance Theater. And they do a show every year. And so I've been doing involved in that. And um, we're actually both going to be in that upcoming. Mm, yes. And um, and I've also been in Chicago there. And oh, they um, they, they did yeah, last year. That was 
two years ago, actually. Two, oh, yeah. it was two years. Wow. 2011, yeah. Wow. Okay. Where does the time go? Yeah, where does it go? <laughs> I can't even believe it. <laughs> Now, yeah. do you still audition now? Or are you trying to like mm -hmm. go into theater, or like what are you in? You know, what are you looking to do? We, I think we both pretty much audition anywhere and mm -hmm. everywhere. We do. We still audition at the Playhouse, but we try okay. and go to New York as often as possible. Okay, yeah. so you do go to New York for auditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you still try to like do that while you're doing stuff in Connecticut. Right. Yeah, just trying to find time. And also, I've been recently trying to branch out into. Film, trying to not okay. not audition for a film because I've never. It's always not, been not. trying to <laughs> not not. Um, I think that I've always been kind of scared of doing that, but I've recently started auditioning a little bit for commercials. Right, and but stuff it's like nice because um, and it's because it's different. right. It's different and it's usually just like a day long job and okay. then you're done. You know, I haven't. I've I've had like maybe a callback for a commercial, but I'm still trying to. It's funny though because we're use of the stage and yes. so when I went to this audition for the commercial I was like really big yeah <laughs> they were like okay Tone try it, it again but you you don't have to be so big yeah I was like sorry <laughs> you're so used to but it's nice right. though doing something like commercial it changes up the pace you know right. you don't have to memorize an entire play or right it's a lot of improvising actually yes. which I have come I'm Learning. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to take some improv and uh, like go to like an improv uh, yeah, place and do some so courses. Yeah, it's so helpful. Even improv is so helpful for anything, like because you never know what's going to happen like on stage. Regular job interviews Just regular, too. Regular, yeah, literally, you exactly. need to improv every day of your life. Yeah, every yeah. day, you really yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, we're doing it right now. Yeah, right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> little do you know. Well, um, we're gonna have a little. Uh, we're gonna do a little cut to them at uh, fall sets in the piano shop, and then when we come back. We're going to have uh, them sing for us in the studio, so we'll be back in just a second. Do you ever feel already buried deep? Six feet on this feet and no one seems to hear a thing. Do you know that there's still a chance for you? Because there's a spark in you. You just got to ignite.
Jean's gone, she's moving on. Her smiles and your fantasies play a duet that will make you forget where you are. The music starts playing, it's the beat of her heart saying, Let me be your star. I can't even tell you. I need your autographs. Um, well, that was a, this, was a, our, this was our first show. Uh, I'd like to thank Carolyn and Amanda for coming out um, so far into West Hartford. And um, also Chastity for Bella by uh, Chastity. And I'd like to also thank Kyoko and Evelyn of uh, Apricot Blossom Therapeutic Massage and of um, Essex Spa, which is you know going to be joining. And um, if you have any ideas, or anything you'd like to know further information on, you can find me on my Facebook page, What's Happening West Hartford. And uh, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. She's a talk show host with style. She's a talk show host with flair. And she struts around the town. 